Hello everyone, I'm Debbie Polichek. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making a window card. A window card using one of our new stamp sets from Celebration. It's going to be the Timeless Tropical. And we're going to use this uh, stamp right here and we're going to make a three-dimensional flower out of it. And I'll also be showing you how I like to use my watercolors sometimes, uh, especially the watercolor pencils. And I do like to use it on cardstock because it's less expensive than the watercolor paper. This, this punch right here, it's, it's free right now with Celebration with a $100 order. They also have a stamp set that goes with it. It's called Timeless Blooms. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, um, I already started with one. I got one of, of the flowers stamped. I'm stamping it once with the gorgeous grape. Now I'm gonna take that and wipe it off what I can. And I'm gonna take my dirty Versamark because this is how you get a Versamark pad all good and dirty by doing stuff like this. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to stamp it with the Versamark. Use my clear embossing. I will emboss off camera, so... Uh, if you if you need to know how to emboss, I have a video how to do that. So I'll link I'll put a link on the bottom. I'll put a link to the bottom so you'll know how to do that. Okay, I'm gonna do about three leaves with the garden green. I'm gonna move it down. I think it's two notches. I have to move it down with each one so it don't cross over each one. I'm doing this so I don't have to um, do the embossing in between each one. I can do it all at once. Okay, I'm going to do the little flowers out of uh, yellow, and since I think I'm going to do it out of the yellow, I'm going to go ahead and just do it, just stamp it, Daffodil Delight. But I think any yellow would work and be pretty because the con it's a contrasting color with the purple. So, lighter yellow, like the pineapple punch and use a little sponge dauber and just add some color that way. Kind of more in the center and kind of work it out. Punch one out on camera and then blow on through it so you don't have to sit through that. And um, also we'll cut the all my um, leaves and flowers, other leaves and flowers out with the dye. Okay, I want to go a little bit on my thought process with choosing the colors and how I choose the colors. First of all, there's a little pack and I'll put the description, in, uh, I'll put a link in the description below about uh, this little pack. It's a bunch of little cards and stuff. I'm, I don't know if they intended that to be for like pictures or like a photographs kind of looks like it but I'm going to use that and I'm probably going to cut a window inside of here this is very important to me I should I need to do this on one of my markers too because when you're picking a color it's hard to tell in this what color you're going to use for instance when I was looking at this I thought oh I'm going to need granny apple for that 
But when I look at here, I know that that's my, what I'm going to do. This was actually done on watercolor paper, so it's going to change a little bit because I don't have it done on. I should have one with watercolor paper and one with cardstock that I use to get more of a true color. But I know that's going to be pretty darn close. So I see that the garden green is actually what I need to make it look similar to that. And the flower. Okay, the flower. I love these flowers here and how they did it. See how the stamen is, is left light? Well, that's why I cut two of them, because I think I'm going to actually cut this stamen out of it and use that on top of this flower. And I may even use some of these petals. I'm not real sure. No, probably not. I think it does okay without them. But it probably the only thing I'll be using out of this is the stamen. And, uh, okay, the colors I chose. When I look at the gorgeous grape, that's the color of this, of the stamp. It just doesn't seem exciting enough to me. So I'm going to go ahead and use some rich razzleberry in that as well. And then to coordinate with this part, I thought I'm going to do my highlights in the Calypso Coral. So that's my plan. So let's see how that works out. And with that Calypso Coral being light, I think that will be fine. There's many ways to watercolor, but this is the way I'm going to do it today. The new die cases are real smooth. These are the older ones, and they're real, they're rough. It's a rough plastic, so I'm going to uh, do this technique on this. Use it as, as, as a palette, basically. And so what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start off with the rich raspberry. Scratch some of this off on here. And I need some water and a paper towel just to change, go between colors. I'll go ahead and dip this in. I do have water in here, so. So I'm going to just go through here and pick up that rich raspberry and put it through here. Okay, I'm going to go back and use this as a kind of a... So as you can see, there's a lot of color and looks like I will need two coats in order to get the intensity. I'll go ahead and go over this because it's not going to sh show because I'm going to cut the other out anyway. That's rich raspberry, right? to get the intensity that I want from that, like that picture. But see, it kind of leaves those streaks in the dry area, and that's what I want. I want it to look a lot like that picture. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that gorgeous grape and hit that color. What I'm doing now is kind of squinting my eyes and see if I got it about the same level of darkness as this red is here. Because I want it, might not get it quite that dark, but just two layers, but I think it's probably close enough. <laughs> Okay, 
Let's try that and see what it looks like. Yeah, I can even get a little darker than that. Like, yeah, see how that kind of all goes together better that way? I'll go ahead and go all the way out to the edges too because I don't, I don't want that white to show. I could cut it out, but I don't want to go through all that trouble. And I was thinking about sponging it, but I can see now that it doesn't really need to be sponged on the edges. So let's go with that. And this one, let's just go ahead and just paint that straight on with this purple here, just to give, give it a little bit of color. There. Okay. Try that again. Okay, I want to try one thing. I want to try to put that black in the center, but I'm going to try it on this one to make sure that it'll work. Now, you're not really supposed to use your markers on top of embossing powder, but I'm going to do it real lightly and hopefully be okay. And on this, I'm going to go ahead and make the whole center black. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out just like it is on the bottom, but I'm going to make it somewhat bigger on the top and I might need to go back with some more purple here but let's see yeah I probably will actually I got that a little bit longer on the bottom too yeah see that would be pretty and I think that would be okay because I'm gonna put my gold I mean my glue and then put that gold foil on top of that might as well do that now and let, the, let that be drying while I'm doing working on these. And when I was cutting out, I also cut it, uh, cut three of the gold foil, I mean the gold glitter paper, out of these little leaves. They were in, also in the set. That looks really ugly right now, but hopefully it'll work out pretty. Just little dots of glue. I think I found out that would be better. Just a little bit of glue here and get my stylist and make dots in the white areas of this. Let's just glue this good about that. Yeah, I'll just do that. I also need to color these too. I forgot about these. And I said they would be good with the garden green. Most of the time when you try to put the, the pencils on without doing it on here first, the, it will leave it streaky like you could see where the lines are that you put the pencil on. So that's why I, I like to do it on this. Besides, you can mix the colors like to get flesh tone and stuff like that. You can mix the colors here on the palette to get the colors you want. Okay, and that's enough to give it a little bit of color. And actually, since there's some purple in that uh, in the flower or the pink, it's a good idea to put a little of that color. Let's go with the Calypso Coral to give the light leaves a little bit of color of the flower. You can do that. Stick a little bit of that color in there. I 
actually. I think I'm going to go back with that green and go on around that edges where that white is too because I don't want those white edges. Didn't notice that. I'm just going to go ahead and cut in between each of the petals, right where the line is on the stamp itself. I'm not cutting all the way into the center. Now I'm going to take a water bottle and mist that a bit. I'll take a large stylus. This is like an 8 millimeter, I believe, stylus here. Actually, think this card stocks um, gets more dimension in it than the watercolor paper. Those are kind of creasing, but that's fine because that's the way they do actually do grow. I think I won't even go along with a smaller one around the edges. Let's see if I can get that to even do it more. squeeze it together. See, it makes it more ruffled around the edges. that. Let's do that on this other one too. Okay, here's my worn out piece of gold foil. You can see, but it will work until you get it all off of there. Go ahead and um, put these in my hand and go ahead and give these a little bit of shape too. I'm going to make just a plain old window card, eight and a half by six and a quarter. Eight and a half by so this is eight and a half wide. This needs to be six and a quarter. So 
So that'll be a four and a quarter on the score. Okay, so far so good. So to make a window, I want that window to fall right in that area there. I'm going to try some scotch tape. What would Jennifer McGuire do right now? She would do something real smart. I know that. Let's see. Ain't it? I know. I know. I know what she would do. She would stick this here. This here. Fill it in there. Pencil. Pencil. Or pen. Wrap it there. Now I'll take this away. And do this. Now I'll cut and get a piece of window sheet. So the window should she make sure it fits inside that hole. And let's cut another piece of paper that's this big, a little smaller than this. And see that paper just barely fit through my big shot. Should have been a little bit nicer and neater than that. But I wasn't. But I'm backing this away from this faux line here. because that's the size I want it. Take this die back. This is where I want it to be. And I'm going to put this as the side that goes against the other. Mark it so I'll remember not flip it because my I'm sure my oval is not in the exact spot. And do the same thing. And we'll make it just a little bit smaller than what I marked it to be. Okay. So now we got to put our little window sheet in here. One more thing. I need to go ahead and put this in there before I do that because I want to be able to do it straight too. And does this belong this way? Or does it matter? Just along that way, or no? I guess actually it's this way because of that didn't fit that way. Yeah, it belongs this way. So I need to flip this around. Okay, I know that. I'm gonna glue this now. put my window sheet in there. Go ahead and glue this down. So cover all this mess up. Glue this down. It's too late. Where's that other one at? I can't even tell anymore. Okay, since I can't tell, I'll just put it right there. Now the fun part is not to get the hot glue on the window sheet. 
guess the we got a jig for that right here, don't we? <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.